All right, today we're going to talk about electromotive force. Okay, electromotive force is something to do with voltage or very similar to voltage or electric potential or potential difference as it's actually called. Uh, so we need to review a couple of things before we talk about electromotive force. First thing, just so that you guys remember, electric potential, right, is defined as the electric potential energy per unit charge, okay? So if you have, for example, if you have two parallel plates, one's positive, one's negative, there's high potential over here, there's low potential by the negative plate. If you take a positive charge and you lift it up and you let it go, it will fall down and it will release energy. That energy will change. It will lose electric potential energy and as it falls down, that energy, electric potential energy turns into kinetic energy. So the electric potential energy will change from here to here, right? So Potential difference, or delta V, is what we call, uh, is the amount of how much your energy, electric potential energy, changes per unit charge. So we already know this, we've learned this before. This term right here, potential difference, we often call voltage, right? So if I say voltage, I'm actually talking about potential difference. All right, so this is just a quick review. Now the reason why we want to talk about that, and let's, let's actually define voltage one more time. Uh, some people like to define it because it is your change in potential energy per unit charge. Some people like to define it as the work done per unit charge because work is the amount your energy changes. All right, now we're going to come back to that. So when you have a circuit, right, this is my picture of a battery. Okay, here's the positive end, here's the negative end. When you have a circuit and here's a resistor, the charges will flow from one end to another. Let's say this is a 9 volt battery, right? So the potential difference from one end to the other side is nine volts, okay? So that means that up here, to from here to here, the voltage or the potential difference will drop and the as charges go past the, elect, or the resistor, it will gain, or sorry, it will lose electric potential energy. The energy often turns into other things like heat. If this current, well, or sorry, if this resistor had a resistance of, oh, let's make it simpler, 2 ohms, okay, and you want to find the current, right, we know R is equal to V over I. Um, you can quickly solve that the resist, or sorry, the resistance is 2, the voltage is 9, uh, you solve for your current and you get current is equal to 4.5 amps. Okay. That's simple, we know how to do that. But if you all of a sudden remove your resistor, okay, and you're saying, okay, this is still a nine volt battery, but there's absolutely no resistance, okay? Current then becomes, you're going to move this over here, move that down here, so you, current I is equal to now nine voltage divided by resistance zero. This is undefined, however, as you take the limit as this number gets really, really small, right, this should, the limit of this as, as this number approaches zero, as your resistance approaches zero, is infinity. That means your, your current theoretically should be ridiculously high or infinitely large. However, if you physically take a battery and you hook a wire from one end to the other, the current is not going to be infinity. It will be really, really high, but it will not be infinity. Why is that? That's what we have to talk about when we're talking about electromotive force. The reason is, is because every battery and the wires itself also have resistance as well. So you can think of a battery as, like if we somehow made this dotted line, so it's, we're just kind of looking inside the battery. You can think of the battery as a internal battery, okay, and a mini resistor, sorry, let me draw it as a box for IB, a little mini resistor inside. Now, what that means is, when you take a, a voltmeter and you measure, right, from one side of the battery, out, like outside the battery, from one side to the other, that voltage is going to be 9 volts, or the potential difference will be 9 volts. However, that means that the voltage actually has to drop, right, another time, sorry, it has to, it, from here to here is 9 volts, however, it has to be a little bit higher, it has to drop across this too, right? So there is a small voltage drop across what we call the internal resistance, or, or sorry, the internal resistor. Internal resistor, or internal resistance, uh, 
is simply defined as the amount of resistance the battery has. Or resistance in a battery. Okay, so that's the definition of internal resistance. Because this has resistance, it's going to drop voltage across this. And so inside here, right, the little battery within the battery, that thing has a voltage of just a little bit higher than 9 volts. I like to call it the true voltage of the battery. It's not really called that, or at least we don't call that in science. Instead, we call that the EMF, or electromotive force. The electromotive force is defined as EMF, which the symbol, by the way, is epsilon. Okay. EMF is defined as the amount of work done per unit charge, unit charge in a battery. Now I should make a quick note for both voltage and this. This is per unit of positive. Uh, uh, positive test for a positive test charge. Okay, so this is work done per unit positive test charge in a battery. Now that sounds very familiar, right? That's because that was the definition we said for voltage as well, or potential difference. The potential difference is equal to work done per unit charge. The only difference is, is this says for EMF in the battery, because it's on the inside right here of our battery, the EMF. EMF is just voltage or just potential difference. That's all it is. It, there's no difference. Uh, the, well, there is a small difference, sorry. There is a small difference, and that is just, it's slightly higher than what you actually measure with a battery because of this little bit of internal resistance within the battery itself. So how do you actually solve things with, with internal resistance? Okay, let's put our resistor back. We will call this resistor. We gave it a number last time. Let's just call it R. Capital R will be the total external resistance. When I say external, I mean external of the battery, everything out here. Now, it could be, right, there's another resistor over here. This is R1, R2. R, though, is still going to be the total resistance. So since these are in series, it's R1 plus R2 equals R total, right? So R, to make it simple, we will just have one resistor. We'll call it, this is the entire resistance of the circuit on the outside, or the external resistance. So if I want to know the voltage across this guy, right, across just him, I would use the total resistance of the circuit is equal to the total voltage divided by the total current. If I know the voltage and I know the current, and I, or sorry, if I know the resistance and I know the current, I can find the voltage. We can move this over here. This becomes V equals IR. But again, this V here is the external voltage. This will be 9 volts. If I want to know EMF, I need to add this also, this potential drop right here, the voltage drop across that little tiny resistor. Okay, so we're going to call the internal resistance, we're going to give it a symbol, it's little r, right? Because it's a small amount of resistance. So if I want to know the uh, potential difference or the voltage drop across the internal resistor, I've got to use the same equation, right? V equals IR, right? This should be V equals IR as well. Except the resistor should be the internal resistance, right? So little r. And the current, well, since the little resistor and the total resistor, the total resistance are in series, these two currents should still be the same, right? They're still the total current in the, in the circuit. And this voltage then will be the little bit of voltage dropped across this resistor, okay? Now the total voltage, the EMF then, EMF or epsilon, should equal the voltage, the total voltage across this guy plus a little bit of voltage across him. So this V plus that V. So we're gonna say the total voltage, maybe we'll do V little r just to, to say that that's the voltage across the lower resistor plus V little r, right? So the voltage drop across the internal resistor plus the total voltage drop. So if I want to do this, I could just take this, substitute it in here, okay? And I get epsilon equals, instead of V, right? I'm going to write IR. So total current times total.
total resistance, external resistance. This voltage drop across the small, the internal resistor, right? We will write as, uh, whoops, plus total current times the internal resistance. We do a little bit of algebra and we get epsilon equals I, just factor out the I since it's the same I, total current. Total resistance of the external circuit plus the internal resistance. This equation here is what they give you in your IB packet in topic five under the electric, electric current unit or electric current topic. Okay, and so you can calculate this. Now, warning, whenever you have a problem that has EMF in it, okay, just remember EMF or the electromotive force, all it is is potential difference or voltage. That's all it is. Don't get too confused by it. Uh, don't think it's something that you've never seen before. It's just voltage, okay? A lot of the times when they give you problems, they will even say the EMF is, and they'll give you a certain quantity, 120 volts or whatever, and they won't even tell you the internal resistance. So what they're doing is they assume internal resistance is zero, okay? That this quantity here is zero. And so really they're just, instead of using the word voltage or potential difference, they just say EMF instead. EMF is just voltage. If you have a problem, like let's say it has power or something else involved, they give you power, they give you current, and you need to find the EMF, you don't always have to use this equation. The equation for power, for example, is power is equal to current times potential difference, right? There's other ones as well, but this is one of them. So power of a, uh, expended by a circuit is equal to the current times uh, potential difference or the uh, drop of electric potential. You can solve for power, or sorry, you can solve for voltage, right, with this normally, and that's the voltage, oops, that's the voltage of the battery usually, right, the, the external voltage, okay, for the, the whole battery on the outsides of the battery. However, if on a problem they're just asking for the EMF, if the resistance you have or the current you have is the, the total current and you have the, the power that you have is the total power extended even inside the battery as well, you can just use this and just say this voltage represents the internal voltage or the EMF. Okay? EMF you can actually replace. Anytime there's a voltage, you can actually replace an EMF as long as you either recognize, one, the internal resistance is zero, or two, uh, you know, the information they give you includes the potential drop across that little internal resistor. It's just voltage. That's all it is.